Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Alan's Cloud. My name is Alan and uh, today we're going to be talking about Dell PowerEdge servers. Uh, many of us in the home lab community use these, uh, you know, some of the older generations and in particular I have three of the 11th generation uh, R710 servers and um, you know uh, recently Dell has stopped supporting the uh, 11th generation in their lifecycle controllers. And I've seen many questions in, uh, my, you know, comments to my uh, previous videos on, you know, how, how do you update these things now that they're not doing it? Well, you've got several options. And uh, if you want to know what those options are, stick around. So let's get right to it. Uh, so normally in, um, you know, dealing with uh, PowerEdge servers, you might see something like this. Uh, so when you log in, and I think it's... Uh, F2 to enter the system services for a, a PowerEdge server. Um, you can come and, and turn on this unified, uh, unified server configurator. And I've done videos on this in the past uh, on, on different ways, uh, you know, to, to do these updates. And, uh, and there are plenty of videos out there already. Um, but if you're using this method uh, and you're trying to connect to Dell, it doesn't work anymore. Um, so that's one of the things I, I believe the, the issue is that uh, the catalog... Uh, for the 12th generation and up uh, servers has gotten too big and uh, so they just couldn't support it in the 11th generation anymore. Um, but that's not your only method. Uh, so you can still go to the Dell support page, you know, here this is for the PowerEdge R710s. Uh, and if you scroll down, you know, here's uh, BIOS uh, 660. Um, you know, and, and all of these other, uh, you know, updates are, are still available for for download and installation, um, but you have to pick an operating system where you can pick BIOS and and um, you know each of the the uh, support files here you know have different options. So if I select BIOS and I click on this uh, uh, server uh, right here, this is the firmware, but this is the Windows 32 version. Well, um, you know if that's not the format or that's not the operating system you're running on your server, that can be an issue. So here under different, on other formats, uh, you've got the executable, you've got a bin file here if you're uh, running Linux. Uh, and, uh, you know, so you, you've got a couple of different options. You know what you're doing here? You can use Rufus, you can uh, create a bootable uh, DOS boot disk and, and install uh, some of these uh, updates that way. Uh, but not all of them are compatible. And uh, there, there is an easier way, though you can uh, do all of the updates for your particular PowerEdge server um, using the Dell EMC repository software. Um, you can su uh, search Google for that, or I'll put a, a, a link to this, uh, to the download page here. Uh, Dell EMC repository manager version 3.3. And uh, if you scroll down uh, past the bin file for Linux, uh, here is the executable uh, DRM installer. Um, and you download that uh, file and install it onto your Windows system. I'm running a uh, Windows 10, and um, the application you're going to see is this one here. And uh, so this uh, is not the greatest of software, but uh, you, you, let me let me give you a little bit of a tour here. Uh, up here, when you've done something, when you've clicked on something, you've initiated something, or something is finished, you'll get a little alert that shows up here in the corner. But it's not the most intuitive because you, you actually, in order to see the progress of whatever it is uh, that, that you've turned on, and, and most of the time that's going to be adding a repository, something to that effect, or even kicking off the creation of an ISO file, um, you have to click on this repository manager piece here and come down here to jobs, and you'll see you know, the, the progress bar for whatever it is that, that you're working on. And then to get out of that, you, know, you come back up here and you go back to home. You can get back to this main view. Well, um, so when you first get this software, this is going to be blank. And you're going to have to add a repository. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now, I, I have two in here. I called it mine. Uh, so I have uh, built the repository, and I've got the Linux versions for R2.10.2s and for R7.10s. I've got an R, one R2.10.2. Uh, that's my PFSense box. And then I've got three of these R7.10s. Um, you can see the size of all of the files, uh, you know, in that particular R710 one is 1.65 gigabytes. Well, um, in creating the ISO file, you can trim that down. And so that's what I, I created a different repository 
added the PowerEdge R710 Linux in there, but you can see the file size here is, is less than it was before. Well, that's because um, I run a uh, special uh, uh, H200 card uh, in, in my R710s uh, in IT mode so that, um, you know, you can do ZFS, you can do a bunch of different things, but I didn't want to use the, the Perk 6i, um, you know, RAID cards that came initially with these boxes. So I switched over, uh, bought a couple of cards from the guy on uh, uh, eBay and on YouTube. He's got his own channel, Art of Server. I've done a different update video on, on uh, those cards as well. Great devices. I highly recommend it. But um, since that has such specialized updates and software to it, this ISO file that I'm going to tell you all how to create, once it kicks off, um, you know, it just starts and it you don't really get an option. It's not very interactive. Um, so I didn't want it up trying to update the H200 software away from what he had all, you know, what he had done. Um, so I wanted to take all of the raid card updates out and that is possible. Uh, and that's what I've done here. That's what this trim version is. But, uh, in order to add a repository, there's an important part here. We're, we're just going to call this one new, all right? Um, what it's going to default to right here, the base catalog, this enterprise server catalog, you can see this is for 2020 and this is the very latest one. Well, if you were to come down here and click custom and choose systems, um, you know, one thing that you'll notice is that the R710s are missing. Uh, the R210 uh, is missing as well. Uh, that's because in this particular catalog, the very latest one, this is where they have removed support for those 11th generations. But don't worry, because it is still there. Uh, so what you've got to do, and ignore these because this is what you're looking for, but since I've already done this, uh, it, it's already downloaded. What you want to click on here is this uh, uh, index catalog uh, 2005 and uh, you, the catalog groups here. You want to change that to update catalog GZ format uh, for enterprise servers. And then under catalogs, you want to scroll down and the very last one that supported uh, the R210s and the R710s is this December of 2019. When you click on this and you click save, it's going to uh, essentially import that file. And, and again, since I've already done this, that's what um, this file here is. And by clicking on that one and clicking custom and choose systems. And if you scroll down, here's my R210 too. And there's the R210. Uh, and then if you scroll down here, uh, the R710 is right here. And so you want to click on the system that you want to create your repository for and click save. Okay. Uh, now again, uh, I, I've already got a couple of repositories, but this new repository is going to be called new, uh, but you're not done. So you've selected the system that you want. And if you want to trim it down, like I did, um, there's a few more steps. Uh, if you don't care uh, about the components that are in there, your next um, uh, feature here is going to be custom that you're going to click on. And this is where you get to decide whether you want Windows or Linux and the flavor of Windows that you want. Uh, none of them, um, you know, for the R710 or the R210 have anything in the OS independent. That would have been nice, uh, but it, it, it's fine. Just uh, what I'm going to suggest here for you, because you're probably not running Linux uh, on your systems. So just go ahead, or, or you're not probably running Windows on your R710s. Uh, there's a chance you're running Linux. Um, just select Linux and then uh, select Red Hat 7 uh, and hit save. Okay, and then be, and if you, again, if you don't need to trim down your files, all you're going to do is hit add at this point, but I'm going to trim it down. So I'm going to come down here to custom under components, other components. And uh, so I want all the firmware. I want BIOS. I want application. I want driver. So I don't want the SAS RAID, um, you know, because that's where those updates are. See, if I if I pick this and it pops over here, um, the H700, the H200, see, I, I don't want any of these. And there are quite a few of these updates in there, right? Um, so we're just going to eliminate all of these. Uh, I don't need updates for any of those, and I don't want it updating my 200. So there, by selecting each of those, you're actually removing those particular subcomponents. Um, but I do want network, 
I want uh, serial ATA. Let's do the non. I, I don't have any tape drives, so I'm not going to select that one. Again, we're trying to trim things down. I do want firmware, ESM, the drives themselves. It'll have some firmware updates. I don't have any fiber channel cards, so I'm going to skip that one. I'm definitely going to do BIOS because we want that in there. Open Manage, Diagnostics, uh, Lifecycle Controller, definitely. Drivers for OS Deployment, I'm not going to select that one. Video and Security. So those are all the things that are going to go into this repository. I'm going to hit save and add. So here, and I'll collapse mine and the trimmed down version. Under new, you can see I now have a repository for PowerEdge R710 Linux, and it's at 1.10 gigabytes. Uh, so a little bit bigger than my other trimmed down version. I probably left something else in there. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to select it. And you see how all of these buttons up here uh, illuminated, including export. Uh, so it's, it's kind of interesting. If I were to come down here and I had done and brought in everything, and then I just unselected, you know, the, the firmware update for the H200 and click that, it's odd because, you know, now the export function has, has gone away. So I, obviously that wasn't what I was looking for. Um, so we're going to leave that selected. We're going to hit export. And uh, here's where it gets interesting. What we're going to create here today is a uh, smart bootable ISO file, which means uh, you can actually burn the disk and put it into your R710, or you can do what I did. You can use Rufus and you can burn it, uh, uh, you know, to a USB thumb drive and, and boot that way, uh, and it works perfectly fine. Uh, so we're going to select Smart Bootable. New is the repository that I created before, and then you're just going to pick a, a location where this is going to go. And uh, you can see I had a couple of them in here from before. Uh, let's see here. So we're going to go into R710 Linux ISO, and we're going to call this one new. Okay. We're going to select that and hit export. So now, again, I told you, uh, there, you get a, a new repository is created here. Uh, smart bootable ISO deployment jobs started. So that's your update saying that you, you know, you did that. But if you want to see the progress of it, um, you come here. Now it's done already. Um, that was this one here, new. Uh, so that file, that ISO file, and here's the pop-up. I just didn't get there in time talking to you guys. Um, but it did pop up and say that it was completed. Now that ISO is sitting in that directory, and you can go and, and burn that ISO and uh, boot your r710 and um, you're going to hit i think a f11 to do the bios boot options uh you're going to go to i think the c drive and that'll illuminate the um, options when you have a usb plugged in up front and uh, you'll select the usb that has the iso on it uh, and it'll boot to it and uh you know it'll just uh automatically start the update process and uh, it'll select the first one. It'll, it'll collect the inventory of everything that you need. And then it'll start doing the updates. Um, and you may have to do this more than once. So once it does uh, the BIOS, uh, you know, for the whole system, it, it's, it's got to reboot the system. So there may be another update that's right after that one. So even after you're done with ones that have rebooted the machine, go back into and, and boot to the thumb drive again and let the system run until it, tells you that it is as you know completely done and has no more updates and that it's complete uh, and at that point then you can reboot the system and and you know take the usb drive out and and continue and it, it, theoretically at that point every single device that was in your r710 at that point um is is has now been updated so um that's pretty much it for updating and and this this uh, method of creating one of these drives using this software isn't just applicable to the R710s. Again, you saw the entire system catalog is in there. So if you've got uh, older PowerEdge servers, the updates are available and they're in this method uh, and, and you can create an ISO and, and update, you know, say you've gone to eBay or, or gone on Craigslist and you've purchased uh, uh, another R730 um, you know, or you know, whatever the, the device is, and it's no longer supported by Dell, 
you can potentially find all of the latest and greatest drivers up to the point where they were still supporting it and create one of these discs and all, all in one shot uh, update the firmware for all of the different devices and you know for the BIOS and, and get the thing up to date because I've noticed when I buy these things online and I've bought you know several of the replacement um, uh, R710 version 2 motherboards and, and replace those a lot of times you, you get them off of eBay and they're at, you know version 2 dot whatever and as you can see we're at version uh, 660 at this point so um, you know uh, works works for many different servers is, is my point in this uh if this information was useful please like and subscribe uh i'm very very close to a thousand uh subscribers at this point thank you everybody who's stuck it out this far um a couple of updates here to my uh, uh contact information um i removed the youtube off of here obviously this is youtube so you found me there uh, but my website is above and I have a new forum. Uh, so if you have any questions about any of the videos that you found on here, uh, I've got a YouTube videos, uh, you know, section on that forum. Um, you know, please show up and, and ask your questions or if you have, uh, you know, anything to pass on to other people about uh, the particular topic that we're talking about, feel free to come on in and, uh, you know, leave your information there. Uh, everybody's welcome. So uh, I think that's it for today. And everybody remember, there's uh, no such thing as the cloud. It's just somebody else's computer. Have a good one.